In the vast world of commodities, some are born to replenish such as wheat, corn, and soybeans. While others are finite and depleting, such as gold, silver, and crude oil. These differences shape not just how these commodities are traded but how they are valued and utilized across global markets. This very dynamic of reproducible versus finite resources finds a compelling parallel in the evolving world of cryptocurrency. Take a walk through the fields of traditional commodities and you'll see that agricultural products like corn and wheat operate on cycles. They are replanted, harvested, and resold, often influenced by seasonality, weather, and geopolitical events. Their supply is somewhat elastic and capable of expansion when demand is high, albeit within natural and logistical limits. Contrast this with finite resources like precious metals or fossil fuels. Their limited nature drives scarcity, and thus, their value. They're mined, not grown. Once they're extracted and used, they don't return to the earth in a regenerative way. The fixed nature of their supply makes them long-term stores of value, particularly in inflationary environments. This agricultural versus mineral commodity metaphor is increasingly useful when we examine the cryptocurrency markets. In today's digital asset ecosystem, some cryptocurrencies mirror finite commodities like gold. For example, Bitcoin, Piku Novus, Litecoin, Avalanche, and Cardano all have hard-coded maximum supplies. They all are capped at a finite amount of coins that will ever exist. They operate under a deflationary, supply-constrained structure that encourages long-term value storage and financial utility. Avalanche, Piku Novus and Cardano have an additional driving force beyond being a store of value and that is their functionality and ecosystems. These cryptocurrencies behave like digital versions of gold, platinum, palladium or silver, scarce. They are mined or created through energy-intensive processes such as proof-of-work or proof-of-stake or less energy-dependent as is the case with Piku Novus, as proof-of-time is the consensus mechanism. In the end it makes them immune to inflation caused by over-issuance, which is good for long-term value creation. On the other side of the spectrum, Ethereum and Solana are digital assets with no fixed supply caps. They function more like renewable commodities, still valuable, but more flexible. Their issuers can adjust the supply dynamically through protocol-level decisions or governance votes. These tokens often underpin complex ecosystems, fueling decentralized applications and smart contracts. Their value isn't just tied to scarcity, but to functionality and network effect, much like how wheat is valued for its utility in feeding populations. Yet, despite these differences, the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission and regulators across several jurisdictions globally generally classify many of these assets as commodities but digital ones. This brings a profound insight into the financial implications of crypto assets. Unlike securities, which are inherently tied to equity ownership, profit sharing, or dividend expectations and are closely monitored under strict regulatory frameworks, commodities, including crypto commodities, derive value from market dynamics, utility, and scarcity. What does this mean for investors and global markets? For one, cryptocurrencies with finite supply are fundamentally deflationary. They are not pegged to fiat currencies, which are routinely debased through money printing and inflation. This makes assets like Bitcoin and Piku Novus appealing as long-term hedges against traditional economic instability. As fiat currencies face uncertainty and securities are exposed to corporate and economic fluctuations, these digital commodities stand outside the system, offering a non-correlated financial refuge. Furthermore, the commodity classification provides flexibility for institutional adoption. It opens the door for the creation of digital ETFs, commodity baskets, and innovative instruments like perpetual digital credit note tokens that utilize cryptocurrencies as collateral. In essence, the cryptocurrency space is evolving like the commodity markets did centuries ago, diversifying, maturing, and distinguishing itself through intrinsic digital properties. Whether renewable like wheat or finite like gold, these digital assets are forging new frontiers in finance, one block at a time. And just like commodities have long been the foundation of global trade and economic development, cryptocurrencies are poised to become the digital backbone of the next financial era. Yeah.